So it's on record now. <clears throat> okay, first of all, I gave an assignment. Let me open to it. I gave an assignment that we should attempt to make a a design. I'm coming, I'm trying to open to where I said it. Okay. So the question was watch the part four, five, seven, and seven, eight, and ten tutorial and create a simple birthday design using your knowledge in brushes and masking. Okay, so I'll share my screen on YouTube where we have that those topics uploaded. So that's my YouTube and then I said part four, five, seven. So let's see part four. We'll just look at the topics. Part four was about go back. We want to play. Part four was about the layer panel. Okay, that was part four. And layer types. Okay, so now let's also quickly look at part five too. Part five was about tools and its functions. Okay, let me see the description of these tools and its function. So in this tools and its function, I think I went in detail to discuss the move to add board, rectangle, market to do so, which was part five. All right. Then uh, which other parts now? Part seven and eight. Part seven was still tools and its function, but let's see. Quiet. We talked about crop to spot healing brush to and healing brush to so at least these two brush to inclusive to brush to this is where we talked about brush to for the first time that was part seven okay okay let's go back part eight part eight part eight was brush to and its functions does we majored on brush too because brush is a very sorry was playing in this video i went to detail to explain some oh sorry for my grammar some of the brush tool and its function take your time to understand them and join the free master okay so it was brush to consecrate uh, concentrated then uh, finally part 10 part 10 was masking which was the last topic masking Introduction to masking, and uh, I think this one was. Sorry. In this video, I will I will walk you through a better understanding of the masking, and went on to explain how the mask can be applied to images for you to better understand how layers function. Okay, so it was just masking. So all these topics, I'm just going to do a walkthrough, not like a. A start all over no it's important that you know when assignment is given you go and do it so i'm going to do a walkthrough sorry i was sharing the wrong screen come in i want to share the right screen all right so back to photoshop so first of all, let's look at uh, the things about uh, the first one, which is the layer properties. Those are the things I talked about in that class. That this is a layer panel. This one here, let me detach it. I hope you can hear us. Please mute your mic, mute your mic, please. Because it will disturb the audio, please. It will disturb the recording of this. Ella Roya, please mute, mute your mic. Ella Roya, can you hear me? Hello, hello, Royal. Yes, you need to mute your mic. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, she heard me. All right, so this is a layer panel. This is it. It's no more than this. In case you don't see it, if you, you don't, I mean, you don't see it, you can go to the windows and you will see it, layers. So you open to it. And sometimes we dock it to a particular place, okay? And just hang it there but i want to bring it out now for purpose of this class 
so that you see the layer panel. And we have all of these settings explained already in that part four, maybe even part three itself, but like, you know, what I want you to understand is in part four more, so that if you watch that video, you can attempt the assignment. So, and uh, I think I went on in that layer, in that part four also, to talk about the layer types, the five types of layer. I even added six at the end of that video, I remember, where I talked about the image layer, I talked about the text layer, I also talked about uh, the which other layer now. Talked about the smart object layer. Yes, I explained that one. And I also talked about the sixth one was the group layer. The adjustment layer, I talked about that. And uh, all that layer, maybe one other layer I'm not remembering now. I talked about all these layers so that uh, you will understand how they function. The image layer is one of the things you must definitely use here. And image layers are simply pictures. Let me take this back, then import. Sorry, I noticed that in Telegram, when I click a menu, you cannot see the menu, except you are seeing it by mistake. But we well, have noticed over time that if I select a menu, like I'm already in five menu and it's open, but I'm not sure you who are seeing it. So I will see what I selected in that menu, so you know. So I go to the file menu and I select place embedded. Place embedded is just like to bring something into your Photoshop. So anything you select that has to do with image, that's automatically an image layer. So let me look for, let me look for my personal picture. Okay. So I, I select this. And as soon as it lands here, automatically, if I press the enter key, it becomes an image layer. You get uh, just that one thing you need to take note of is that when we place embedded in Photoshop, automatically it creates a smart object. That's one of the topics we are going to be going into in this new week. It creates this smart object, but it's not... It does not mean that this uh, is not no longer an image layer and is now a smart object. It's still an image layer. The more reason why we call it an image layer because it has the ability to rasterize. Like, you know, it can lose its quality. It's pixel based to like, it has pixels in them. Uh, but the thing about smart object also is that so when something becomes a smart object, it, uh, it, uh, it does not allow the the quality of the picture to die why we transform it remember transform is to scale or upscale it reduce it or rotate it all those are transform or deform it or deform it rather mm -hmm. those are transforming so but when it's in a smart object any deformation you do to it it will it will not lose its uh, real pixels in this week class i'm going to explain it because we are going to treat smart object this week by god's grace so but this is still an image layer because we still have an image on it okay we imported it and we can trim out this guy from it so that brings us to the uh maybe the next uh, two where i talked about some tools like uh Object selection two. W is a shortcut. It's the default shortcut. You can see it here already. W. Object selection two. Uh, somebody commented on this particular video when I posted it and said, wow, like the object selection two is just the best tool. Anybody needs it. I mean, anybody can just, you know, even if you are new to Photoshop, it is true. It is true. If you even watch the highlight of what they are showing you, they are already telling you how easy it is when you use object selection tool. And as a beginner, you really need object selection tool. Even advanced people use it also, but they still got to refine a, a little or two things in it. Then I also said in one of the videos, maybe the first videos that, depending on the version of Photoshop you are using, you can use object selection to maybe like in 2022 is very good. In 2022, object selection tool is the best. Okay, 2021, yes, they tried. 2020, okay. 2019, I think they were just trying. 2018, uh, 
they just started. So that was when they started it, and it was nice, but it was not as good as 2022. So that if you are using 2022, you experience very good object selection. Let me take, for instance, now when I select this picture. But one thing you notice is this if I activate object selection, it's going to hang the video at the moment. Why? It takes the much power from the system to do an object selection. It is AI uh, duty, so it's like power intensive. But I'm going to do it anyway so that those of you who are watching can also see the after result. After the after result, we will all see it. So let's give it a try. Make sure they then we click on the same. I'm sure you might boss you be hand or distorted. It's not what time. But more computers like that feel bad when you're compared to users. The process of 30 seconds at 20 seconds, okay, and depending on the size of the object to just do it. So the object sele uh, select subject is going on and it's more than 50 percent done already. So very soon you will we will all see it together, okay. It's going on, it's going on. Stay with me, please. It's still going on. Almost done. Almost done. All right. It's done. So look at how it has, you know, taken time to trim this object, but there are still a little or uh, two issues. Let me select the lasso to lasso two, so that we can treat all these ones. Okay, it's not even so bad. It's still still there, but the cap here it took away all these places that are not added. I talked about these two, this lasso two. Where yeah, I said that it's good that you leave it in add because if you leave it in new layer, it will deselect what you have already done with the object selection and start afresh. And you don't want that, so leave it in the add. If you need the minus, you can always hold down alt for minus. Once you hold down the alt key, the plus on the icon, if you can see it, it changes to minus. So, but when you release it, it becomes plus because it's plus here by default. So, we just circle it. And that part is gone. If we do not uh, circle that part, like add it, that part will be cut out of the picture. And you don't want that because it's part of the dress. I mean, it's part of the image. Okay. So you can look downwards if there's any area where you think it didn't do well. Because it's a white background and a white shirt on a white background. But yet the AI is able to detect all this. I mean, it's it's nice. Very, very nice. So if you are able to know how to do this, I'm just doing a rough explanation. If you really want to know more, go and watch the video. You just have a part to play. I cannot come out on the video for you. So, but you have a part to play. So, and that's the part you're playing. But for those people who really do not understand how to go about it, perhaps after you have watched the video, I'm just doing this gradually for you. Sorry if you hear noise on the background. I told you before or yesterday that, yeah, I have kids. So, please manage me. All right? So we, if you've done this, if you've done the picture, I now taught in part 10 about masking. Once you have a selection, all you need to do is to click the mask. Once you click on the add layer, man, which is here, if you can see my mouse, is this black and white, like a, a black spot in a, in a white rectangle, okay? So that's what I, you click. Once you click it, it creates a mask, which I have explained. Now, this is just the way Photoshop handles a trimmed image. 
it creates a mask. The description of this mask is in part 10 video. The black areas are the hidden areas where I explain black hides, white reviews. The white areas are the areas visible. And I said that there's one key you can press, control and I to inverse it, meaning the white areas become the black and the black, the white. If I press that key, control I, you will see that the hidden objects, what you see here, let me hide this now. The hidden object, I hope you can just see this. The hidden object is what is showing because I reversed it. And on the layer, you can see that it's reversed. So you don't want that. It's the image you want, except you are creating a silhouette. If you know what a silhouette is, you can browse about, about it. Silhouette is just a black image, a black, uh, uh, yes, a black image of something. Yeah, it can be human, it can be anything. All right? Welcome, blessing. I see you. Welcome, blessing. Thank you for joining us. All right. So the black side, the black hiding part is not the one we want to hide. So we want it to be revealed. So we reverse it by control I. It's a toggle key. Control I toggles, you know, black, white, reverses it just like that. So this is, if you have done this step for your birthday uh, design, you have done more than 50%. The next thing now is perhaps using your brush tool, your text tool, and bringing those things, combining it together. I have not taught a, a adjustment layer because that's like, we are just going to brush over it a little then. Maybe for those who wants to do Pro Master, we can treat adjustment layer like detail so that you know how we use adjustment layer to affect pictures. But for now, if you have done this step, you have done well. And so let's look at the people who accomplished this. This is a Ace Graphics. Ace Graphics, you did wonderfully well. I am sure maybe they gave you this picture, like a, maybe a snap from the studio. Somebody's mic is on. Please tell them to go off. Who is there now? Okay, nobody. I thought I was hearing noise. I hope you guys can hear me. Hope you guys can hear me, please. I really want to know I'm not talking to yes, myself. Yes, okay. All right. Oh, Ace Graphics, you're online. Welcome. Yes, we can hear you. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. So, Ace Graphics, I, I think I love what you did about this picture. I am very sure they did not give you this picture trained already. Maybe you did a work. And if you didn't do the work, please, that's why we say we should you should try. But if you did, kudos. Okay. Though I can see some white halos around here. And there's a way to treat that, but it's not for a beginner's level, but it's okay. It's not noticeable for some persons, but me, I've noticed it, and I'm already seeing it already. Though from afar, you will not notice it. But you really want to do a professional job, guy, these helos, these white helos here that I showing here would not show at all. And maybe you use just object selection. So object selection does not finish it. That's why I say for pro, they will just use object selection for start. But they never end with it like they are not okay with whatever it's done they still want more and so a way to accomplish that is by using other tools but you did well so let's check the next person the next person is a somto Pala. okay somto i think you did a very great job no helos except you downloaded this image as png and i i don't think you need the kudos but if you didn't like you trim this picture However, you did it, object selection, lasso to polygon, anything you did at all with this picture, it was wonderful. There's no helos at all. It was just, it's just good. It's just very, very nice. And I love it. Okay. So well done, Somto. These are the only two persons that uh, submitted. Don't worry. <laughs> You'll be surprised what I'm going to do for you guys. Okay. So the next thing that we talked about is uh, brush two. Okay. Let me brush too. I never gave out this brush, but I discovered that someone discovered it like a uh, Sumto he discovered the brush and uh, wow, I was impressed like wow this guy, he went ahead to look for it. Even the love brush too. Yes, that's very, very good. Like this is part of what we want. Make a research about what you want to do and how you want to get those tools. Uh, you must not copy everything, but at least you must give a try. Okay, so in this uh, one, I tried to just do... This is just a rough design. I was just playing. It was even a class. 
like we were I was teaching brush to then and when I just did this, I said, okay, why not just give them assignments and let them give it a try too? And so that's how I came up with this. If not, this is never a well done birthday design. Okay, I think I would even prefer what uh, Ace Graphics did. Like he spent time to work on this. I will tell you why later. Why I think I prefer Ace Graphics though. Okay. okay. So back to the assignment. So one of the things we did was that if you watch this image here, it's like a, it's like a, it's inside the background. You might even see this itself. Like maybe this was initially a backdrop. Then I was just sitting down around the backdrop. You might just look at it that way, but it is not true because the image is seen across the laptop. So it's not a backdrop. But so far, we have created an illusion. Okay. But we did that with the brush tool. Okay. Okay. All the other things you see, the dot, 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 is called half tone. Okay. It's a half tone uh, kind of uh, effect. But it's also a brush tool, like it came with a brush tool. You can have half tone downloaded online, or you can also have it as a brush. It's a beautiful thing when you understand how brush function. In fact, you do a lot. You do a lot. There are some designs that maybe in future will be analyzed. And I will tell you that this thing you are seeing here is brush tool that did it. It's nothing else. Okay. So let's let's try and look at uh, okay, we are still here, we're still here. So let me just off this layer create a new layer, take it down. All these things I'm doing, I have already talked about it in part four and maybe part five, working with layers, right? So I add a black, so no, a white background to this layer. Uh, there's a shortcut, shift and backspace. It's a default shortcut, so even any Photoshop can do it. So in this content here, I'm going to select the white and click OK. That's all. I don't touch any other settings. And that's all I want to do there. The next thing is I activate this layer. Okay. I'm using this picture now. I select the transform, that's control T, and I increase it, trying to achieve what I did with that picture there. So now I want to play a trick here. It's a trick I want to play. I already know that there's already a mask here, but I want to also have another mask where this picture is hidden, okay? Not trimmed now because I still want to re reuse this picture even after I have faded it to the background. So I will group this picture, just only the picture, I will group it. And it's, is it grouped now? No, sorry, it's not grouped. I'll just put it inside the group. I must make sure it's inside the group. Like this now, it's inside the group. So when I close the group, it's hidden. When I open the group, it's out. So that's what I want. Then in this group, I'm going to create a mask attached to it, okay? But now, I'm going to play a trick now, the second trick. This trick now is, first of all, let's rename that group to Pix. Just double-click and press Pix. So this trick I want to play now is I'm going to hold down Alt and click the mask. In the part 10, I explained that when you just click on the mask, it will create a layer mask attached to the layer. This time around, the group layer. But nothing will happen let's see it if you click on it it has created a mask layer and nothing happens like nothing is hidden because white is what is on the layer and what does white do white reveals so but if i undo and instead of just clicking on the layer mask hold down alt and click on that layer mask it creates a black and now our picture is gone okay our picture is gone and because the, the layer mask is black so this is where we now bring in the brush tool. So if we select the brush tool B, we select it. You must select a layer to make it active here. Once you don't see your brush tool, like it's showing like it's an error. If you click night, Photoshop will say, could not use the brush tool because the pixels in a group cannot be edited without merging the group. So it means you have not selected something the brush tool can be active on. If you select this layer, it will work. But if you select anything that is not you know, it cannot work on it. You tell you it cannot work. Look at it, it can work here. It can also work here. Sorry, it cannot work because it's locked. You see, it's locked here, so it cannot work. And it's also invisible. But here, it can work. So this gives us the impression that we can work on this layer mask. So we increase the brush size. And I've done this a lot, okay? I said you can right-click on that open place and just drag the size of the brush. 
come out a bit to see your size. If you have to be doing come out and look at your size, go back and increase, come out and look at your size. That's a time wasted. So there's a keyboard shortcut, and that's the bracket open uh, and close. If you watch my tips and tricks, that was the last post. The last post, tips and tricks. Or oh, sorry, let me go and check it. I'm just quoting what, let me go and check it. The last class was uh, on Friday. How to work faster in Photoshop. That was the last slide. If you watch it, you will see that I explained how to use this brush. There were five tips I explained there. And so use the keyboard shortcut to increase it and decrease it, you get. Now, but before I paint over, I also talked about these two guys here, the black and the white. The one on top is the foreground. The one behind is the background. These names are very important because if you have to do some things around this place, maybe in Photoshop, like where we went to refill the layer, shift and backspace. If you are writing, it's a very good shortcut to write. You will see foreground color and you see background color. This foreground color is talking about the color that is on top. And the background color is talking about the color behind. So that's something you should know that that's the name of these two guys here. Okay, so let's select the layer mask. So on the when we select the layer mask, you see that it changes color. The thing about layer mask has been talked in part 10 that black hides white reveals. So the foreground is what the brush uses, not the background. But the background is there so that when you want to use the white color, the other color, you can quickly switch over. So what is on the foreground will go to the background, and what is on the background will come over. And the a way to do that is by using the, the button X. X for xylophone, X for X mass, those are spelled X mass, X for just no box, box X, yeah, that's what I mean. So if you press the X, the foreground goes to the background, background goes back to the foreground, okay, and so it's white. But now the layer mask is black. Are you going to be painting black on black? Obviously, you don't expect anything to happen, but if you are going to be painting white on black, you should expect something to happen, okay. So that's the first sentence you need to say. Sorry, second sentence. The first sentence is your size of the brush. The second sentence is perhaps you can it can go in any order. It must not be in the order I'm saying, but maybe the first sentence can be your size of the brush. Check the size. You're okay with the size. I, I have 2,500 pics here. It's okay. I'm fine with it it's because the image is big. The next sentence is the settings of the foreground and background. Okay. The top settings can be, if we go back again, the hardness or softness of the brush. I think I have explained this. I don't want to go over it again. But this, for this class, it is going to be a 0% hardness. So it's going to be a soft brush. So we are done with that. The next settings is the opacity and flow function. This opacity, if it is 10%, it means it's going to be applying very little. But if it is 100%, it means it's going to be applying very much. Same thing with flow, okay? So if you have done all these settings, your brush is ready to be used. So what do you do here? You just damp, you know, damp. You take something, maybe a cloth, dip it in water and damp it. That's exactly what we're going to do. We just damp once. You might damp and undo and damp again. Just damp and see first. So when we damp on it, we see the image. This is exactly what we did. We just clicked once. And so we, this image now looks like it's in a, a glass or in a snowy area or it just showed up from the gloom, you know, coming out from bright lights. That's exactly what we created with just the brush too. Then when you look at your layer mask, you see something similar to what you have done. You damped with the white and with a soft brush. How about, what if you are done with a hard brush? What would have happened? Let's undo. So if you increase your hardness, brush and press enter and damp also what would have happened look at your layer mask you see what's happening it's just sharp at the edges and yeah it's not looking like we have not created that fiction so but i think the previous one sorry no previous one made more sense okay so we select the layer mask and right click and reduce the hardness of the brush okay by the way there's a shortcut to reduce this you just watch uh, the tips of part 10 and you get to know that so we'll just click once and we create that illusion. Maybe I don't like that. Please let me take it up a bit. Aha. Something like that. So this is just at 100%. If you do 10%, it will not be as bright as this. And so 
this is one of the things you can create now let's look at some persons who give it who gave it a try okay for this let's go to okay uh no no uh some to did not give it a try at all i think you all used other brush things so you didn't give it a try so let's try let's check okay uh ace graphics you kept a part of this but i don't know if it is brush to you use or because there are methods to doing this too okay but however we we are the same illusion that is created in this particular place is also created here so kudos again i think you are already winning my heart for this particular assignment all right so that's the brush too now there are more things about the brush too that you right click sorry with the brush too now not just you right click and you have this open i hope we can see what opens though because i i just i don't know you can see what is open i've been talking about it so much so when you right click and you see the brush settings maybe i should even use the panel let me go to windows so i'll be sure let me not be guessing that you are seeing it all right so this is the panel so if we open the panel you will see that there are more things more brush type look at general there are more brush type let's see what it does let's reduce it this hard brush let me create a new layer and uh, I select black so this hard brush okay let's go back now brush tool please uh, brush panel oh not this one this one here so we have other types of brush like this one Okay, this is a, another type of brush. Let's see what it does. Let's increase the size. And when you increase the size, you see it very well. So this is a very kind of rough or tattered brush. I don't you know. It's, it's useful though. It's useful. Imagine if you have to create a, a green grass. So you select a color of a brush, a color that is green also. Uh, select a green color. And that green is not even sharp, so, but you you just get the point, Sha. The brush helps you to create that illusion. You can increase the size and make it do the thing faster. It's even behaving like a cloudy kind of brush. It's nice. It just depends on what you have in mind to create. Okay, so, but that's not what the one I want. So we have other types. Then we have the ones that comes online. Like by default, you will see this folder one, two, three, four. This is where you will stop. But I have these other ones. I have plenty set, but I do not install them. It's when I need them, I install them. I have this half tone. Then inside this half tone, there are many types of brush. Look at when I select, just what happened. This is a type of a brush. Half tone one, half tone two, half tone three, half tone four, and it goes on and on. The one we used was half tone seven. That was the one we used. Okay. So let me select that and we kind of uh I'll take away that layer now then increase the size of the brush as you are increasing you are seeing it are seeing it then uh check take note of the color if we are okay with green we can damp with green any color at all okay take note of the opacity those are the settings you need to check take note of the flow the flow is 38 percent let's take it to 100 back okay then uh this type of brush does not have hardness. Not all brush have, has a hardness level. So this is just, you damp once and you notice the effect. I changed to move to, you notice the effect around. And I mean, it's very cool. I love this a lot. I don't know, I just love it a lot. Okay. You can also reduce the opacity. No, no because we say you should add effect. So you make it clear in our face that, yes, I use the brush too. You can see it over there. I can also see it if you did not have to make it too obvious. I can guess that you did something there. Okay. So that's just it. All right. So we, if you did this, kudos to you. So let's check the persons who made attempt on that. All right. So, so yes, no, you did. Your equally uses a love brush. Yes. A nice one. I'm going to show us that love brush, but I don't know if what is uh, hidden in the background is also a brush too. 
I've never seen this kind of brush before. I know I have many types of brush, but I've not seen this type. But if it isn't, or if it is, so far you faded something in the background. Well done. You have done something well also. Is graphics. So, but for what, for what we are talking about, uh, Mr. Sonto, you got it absolutely right. Only that, if you ask me, it's so glary on my face that you used it and it's okay. Still okay. So, that is that. So, for the type of brush that Mr. Sonto also used, uh, I still have that brush. That's uh, the Love Dispassion brush. Aha, uh -huh, something like this. For this, most times, once you select the brush, green is already selected. You can select red. You use this, maybe Valentine period, it makes a whole lot of ten sense. Or uh, for somebody whose name is Love, it can make sense too. Wedding, okay? Wedding IVs can make sense. So I just select it. On its own, it, it's like, let me select the move too. It adds some kind of glue. So this, this is the beautiful thing about this brush. You get you must be careful not to overdo it, okay? It's nice, but some effects can be too nice and to become noise, but it's just nice, okay? So if you have this brush, you are doing well. It's very good. So, but if you need it, please, it's also good you also ask, okay? I don't want to be dropping some things if people do not ask. If you need it, you can also ask. I'll just upload it to the Telegram channel and you can download it, okay? So that is that. So. The final thing now is the text, application of text to images. I never taught this, but I want to appreciate his graphics for going ahead of the class. Please, you are, not to, you are not to move with the same pace with us if you like. I mean, it's not compulsory. You can be faster, but not too slower, okay? You can be catching up ahead, but not too slow, okay? Because if we have to be talking about what we talked about throughout this week, on weekends, it will not be that that period you do not have time. The next weekend you bring us back to what we thought. It will not be funny now. I don't think we want to go back to that. Okay, so but this is also very very good. This is also very good, and it's you know it's good. You can achieve it in your own text. Okay, for some two years, you also went ahead of the class <coughs> because I don't think I have taught shadows. I don't think I've taught uh, bevel. You did bevel. I can see it. And I have not taught all this, but you did all this, okay? Maybe you even did bevel to this, or it was just shadow. But however, it's also very, very nice. All the things we did, very, very nice. Like, this is a beginner's class, and it's a good attempt, okay? So, but it's fine. It's very, very fine. So, let me just try a little text on this particular one. Let me hide this now because we are using green now and this is red. So let me hide it. All right. So for text, let's just put a text. Select the text tool with a T. Okay. And uh, okay, palanquin can increase the size of the text 48 or 60. 60 is fine. So we click. I didn't create a layer. It's okay. It's fine. And uh, you can still increase the size increase the other properties of the text these are the things i've talked about in other uh, tutorial videos so let me just type something okay since we are using happy birthday now let's say happy happy here it's good that you treat each text sometimes as one each as a separate layer then I can duplicate, Control J for duplicate. I hope you came to class with your Biro and Jota. So Control J, I duplicated, and I can put birthday there. Okay, since we are using green now, let's keep a green color. I can select both and give it green. Okay, maybe I need to increase this size one more time. Okay, and so for one of the things uh, those guys applied, which is very good for those who are new to the class, they had to come to this place, the effects menu. If you select the layer, any layer at all, but like 
we are dealing with text now. So if you select the text layer, you cannot select two at once, except you group them, then you can select that. Okay, we don't have the time to, so let's group. It's already 8.52. So we group, then we'll call it Happy Birthday, HBD. Okay, the name doesn't matter. So we'll go to FX and go to, uh, okay, some to use Bevel and Emboss, so let's go there. So select Bevel and Emboss, and here we are. Now, whatever we apply here, will be showing here. So this is like our preview area. The settings here is already showing here already. I can see it, but we can reset it to default. Well, that's what I like to do. I just reset everything to default first, then I start again. Now, the thing about Bevel, this is not a class for it, but the thing about Bevel is that it has ties. It has ties. So let's try outer Bevel. Try out a bevel. You may notice some changes. You may not notice, but you just have to increase the size to notice it more. Now you can see I'm increasing it, scrolling with a mouse wheel. Okay, I'm just scrolling. You can also be pressing the up arrow on your keyboard button, and you'll be noticing something. You can soften it. Okay, as it comes, you can also increase the depth. You get. But one thing it has done is that it has popped out the text from the background. Okay, so those those are the things the guys does, or uh, some of, uh, some of them did. Those who did the assignment. Now, if you come down to this place, this is another place where you can make a very good and interesting adjustment. The dark areas you see are controlled by this shadow mode and opacity. Right now, it's at fifty percent. If you reduce it, you will notice it here. Okay, if you also increase it, you will notice it very well. It's like shadow, but it's like it is attached to this. But one thing you also have to notice is that this text we are using is not really a very bold text. So when you want to try to use bevel, bevel is like a, a 3D cheat. So it emulates a 3D. Yeah, so it's a 3D cheat. So let's click OK first to this and increase the weight of this text to something very bold if we have it. So let me say, oh, that's the boldest of this text. Then we we'll have to change the text. So let's select something like value. Another favorite text of mine. Value is downloadable in Google Fonts. Okay. So that's the fonts. Okay. And now let's go back to the effects. Once you have applied an effect on a folder, you can push this button up and down to see the effect you apply. They will all way as they will all be lined up here. If we add drop shadow, it will be lined up here. Okay, we'll talk about this soon, but you know, just to run ahead to understand what we are doing. So I double click on it and I can increase it, and you'll be noticing what is happening. I think let's try inner bevel. Uh -huh. This is an inner bevel, the effect is more okay. Outer bevel works sometimes when the background is dark, not light. Okay, so this is softness. This is the size we increased before. Let me reduce it so you see what happens. Uh -huh. I think this was at the point where Somto's own looks like this. Okay, then uh, the opacity level, you will notice it now. You see the opacity level of the, sh the dark areas and the light areas is this highlight. Okay, if you increase it, you will notice these areas are shiny. These areas are shiny. Okay, so you can reduce it or increase it. All right. So if you have done that, then you can also go down on this pane to just select the drop shadow. Okay, you can reset to default, but I think it's already reset. I don't like to check this use global light. If you have many things to do in Photoshop that has to do with shadow, please uncheck it. In a class, we can talk about that. Okay, so I uncheck it and I increase the size, the distance of the shadow. The distance controls how far the shadow is from the object. The spread for beginners level, I believe spread. Spread has some techniques, but one thing you can adjust is size. Okay, and size is always good when it is around the figure of distance. That's when it is the best. Okay. So let me take this distance quite a close. Okay, 35, 35 is fine for both. Let me still reduce it. OK, 
okay now you can also control the opacity okay and it will be showing the shadow will be showing and we click okay okay so that's something you can attempt and you can see now the effect you have applied are devil and emboss drop shadow so this gives us a kind of a control we can off shadow with the visibility eye or icon and it's off you can on it back and it's on you can off the bevel sometimes you can finish design you say i don't think i like that bevel let me remove it and you remove it it's very easy to remove and fix back so that's something you should do. so that's one of the things you see in some post on that's one of the things you did just that this shadow this shadow looks very suspicious i'm suspecting it didn't even use fx but you know there are other ways to apply shadow but it's fine it's just too glaring too glaring all right uh ace didn't use shadow much he used a soft shadow here if i'm correct that's a soft shadow and soft shadows are the best if you want to go into ui ui and ux i mean you just need to you know be minimal with your shadow application and so that's it guys that's it you guys did very well i think uh for these two persons that submitted this i'm going to announce on the whatsapp group what i'm giving you guys okay that's something i'm going to do for you know participating in this i'm not going to be doing this all the time but i'm impressed that of all the number of persons we have 40 persons about 40 or 50 persons in whatsapp group also the same amount or around the same amount in telegram but only two persons were serious with the assignments so i think i need to award them that's just me being generous it will not happen all the time okay so guys i really appreciate you guys i don't know anybody question anything you want to ask i really appreciate you here let me know any question please hello any question any question that's what i'm asking any question please no 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 uh, cool with this one you made okay jonathan uh ace graph is no question jonathan no question okay so to no question too um sir just one thing that okay um, what is graphics with the text there at the day but yeah how how is it done all right <laughs> i was expecting this question okay all right there are two things to what it did there are many ways you can achieve this okay but uh here's what i like to do sometimes let me go to where we have our uh, work working. All right, so here's what I like to do. Let's remove this bevel and emboss because it didn't apply it. it also, also remove this drop shadow, it didn't apply it. So let's uh, duplicate this particular layer. So we have it too. Control J. Uh, Jonathan says, My voice is breaking. Is it true for you guys, please? Because it's important for the video recording. Please, if my voice is breaking, let me know so that I don't waste this time. Okay, it's not. Jonathan, fix your network. Thank you. All right, so how this is done is I have just duplicated. This is a method. This may not be the method is used, okay? But how this is done is when I have this, I already have the original layer. I can make this the original layer. So let me call it orig HBD original. Original, all right, and uh, this one is the one we want to add that stroke effect. Okay, stroke. So I will convert this to a smart object. First step, step number one. Some to you might need to write smart object. So when I convert it to a smart object, automatically what this means is that if I want to make any changes, this is not a smart object class. I can go inside. Okay, but right now. What I want to do is, I want to make a selection, like what uh, 
object selection will do. But I'm not going to tell object selection to help me do it. I can do it with the control key and the mouse, the left click button. So if I hold down the control click and click on that layer, even before I click, you see that something is coming up on the icon of the mouse. So I hold down, click and click on it. And with this, it has created a selection around it. That's the first thing. Once it has created a selection, you are already 50% close to what you want to do. Now, there's one uh, command or feature in Photoshop, <coughs> excuse me, that reduces selection, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Just, excuse me, reduces selection or increases selection, meaning it can uh, expand the selection and it can reduce the selection by how many pixels, by a number of pixels you fix there. And so I have a shortcut for it. Thank God, I'm already building my shortcut since they asked me. I've already compiled and I just remember that that is part of it. So it's in the selection menu. Sorry, I'm not seeing my selection menu. From selection menu, modify. The two of them I'm talking about are expand and contract. If you uh, remember in school those times, muscles, say muscles contract as it reduces expand and contract expand the word expand tells you what it will do already so when i select is the contract i want not the expand because i want it to reduce okay so i contract unless you can try let me try three pixels okay depending on the size of your art board three pixels may not work for you but when you select any pixels any amount of pixels you will see it you will know that I'm not sure it can work. Okay. Then you click OK. So it has contracted, but it's not much. So I need it to be more. So let me do that again with my short shortcut this time. Control. Okay. I was pressing the wrong shortcut. Okay, so let me add three more. And now it has, you can see it now. It has reduced the selection. And this has happened everywhere. And the layer is selected. So what we do now is, who can guess? Alt and mask. We hold on Alt and mask. Automatically, it will create it. You are not seeing it now because the layer underneath it is still active. So let's off that layer. And that's it there. We have created this stroke first. Are you getting it now? Now, if maybe like the image we use, where's the image we use? This guy, yes, we duplicate it and we bring it out of that folder. It's bold now. Okay, and let's reduce it. Reduce it. Uh, for sake of, so that we can see the or this layer very vis visible what we can do is we can reduce the opacity of this uh, other layer. Reduce the opacity uh -huh. so that we can see this one. We are already emulating Ace Graphics. Ace Graphics, you are, you are a star now. <laughs> All right, so now we will not emulate completely, okay, so that we can also... So for the areas where the cloth cuts across, where or where the cloth cuts across, just like he did in his own, where the cloth cuts across will be the outline or the stroke effect all right why the other areas uh guys my 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 uh what is it called now my generator is shutting down but don't worry my laptop is on just my face you will not see well after that all right so for that area what we can do is remember this layer is still active remember so but this is what we can do. We can uh, control click again on the image. Okay, no, not on the image now, on the layer mask. Let me just select on the layer mask and you will see it. You will see how the layer cuts across. Then, okay, before that, let's make this active and disable it, that's deselect it rather, and create a layer mask on it. Okay, create a layer mask on it. So now what I would do is, 
the areas where I want it to show, I will just control click on that. Then from here, I'm going to wipe out the areas where I don't want the outline to show. So on this now, I will just select the brush tool, not this brush now. And hard brush. Let's take a hard brush. Reduce the size of it. Why did we make this selection? So that it will respect the boundaries where we want to uh, make the changes. We cannot paint white on white, so we change it to black. And make sure opacity is 100, flow is 100. Then we remove. We remove. We remove. And it's out. So depending on the position of what you do, of, uh, of the text, you will just notice it. That's just it. Okay? This may not be his method. There could be other faster methods. Okay? But so far, this can be achieved with this method. So it's a good, good thing you asked this question now. All right. So did I answer your question, Sonto? I'm sure I did. Before you. Sumto, did I answer your question? Hello. It was my agenda that went off, not the network. Yeah. All right. so, yes, sir, you did. Although my network was a bit moving. So All know. right, I can already understand. Okay. So with that, now any other question? I'm sure I've answered. Any other question? Welcome to Nigeria, where we own our rechargeable lanterns. Any other question? Jonathan, you want to say something? All right. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate your time. And like I said, this video is recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So that those people who did not partake in the class can also follow suit. Then if you think there's something you saw me, click. You can go and watch the video again. Or you can DM me, ask me your questions, and I would love to answer you. Until Monday class, I mean Monday post, we we'll definitely get new video posts to continue the Photoshop basic class this week. Thank you very much for this time we spent here. And I will see you next weekend for another exciting time. Please watch out for assignments this week. Watch out for assignments. Even if you did not do this assignment, better attempt it. You can do me personal chat. We will not do a live recording for you, but you can do me personal chat. We'll talk about it. So thank you, guys. Peace. Thank you very much. Thank you.